As many of you know, the, the ministry of the PRCC is all about our chaplains, but most of our chaplains are married and it involves their family in the mission field. It truly is an amazing sacrifice that so many of our families go through and specifically our chaplain spouses as they're very much a part of this amazing ministry. And I'm very fortunate today to have with me my partner and sweetheart, Terry, who's gonna share a little bit about the ministry of our chaplain spouses and the impacts that they're making as well around the world. <laughs> so when Jim first mentioned going into the chaplaincy, I was nothing less than mortified. I had no history to call upon. The only thing I could imagine was Jim running through the woods like Vietnam being shot at. You know, it was really a scary thing for me. But as we thought about it and prayed about it over the months, Jim felt stronger inclined. I did not. So at one point, Jim very wisely came to me and said, if we, as we evaluate this call in our lives, let's try it for three years. During that time, we'll pray, we'll seek God's guidance as to whether or not this is a life calling for us or not. So knowing that he felt so strongly about it, there was no way that I could say no to something he felt called by God to do. I wasn't about to put myself in that position. Having had a father who was a Presbyterian minister, marrying a Presbyterian minister, I believed that if God was calling Jim, then that call was on my life as well. So we agreed, we signed up, we got in. I was blown away at how great it was. There we were in this vast mission field, thousands of soldiers and families who did not know Jesus. Thousands of Christians in a Christian community there in the chapel system. 50 other chaplains and their families. The camaraderie, the fellowship, and the mission that we found immediately began to change my heart. And I began to love the military and, the, sorry, the people and what it is they do. And I knew that they deserved people like Jim to be with them and to lead them to the Lord, to pray with them, and to guide them, to counsel them in their lives. And so when the three years ended, Jim came to me, and he was very serious. He's very serious about his promises. So he came to me, and we were gonna have a sit down, talk at the dinner table. That's where all of our serious conversations happen. And he, uh, he asked if, this is something we wanted to do. And I'm like, are you kidding? Don't even, just sign, yes, where are the papers? Sign the papers, we're good. So he did, two and a half weeks later, Saddam Hussein invades Kuwait. <laughs> and life, life took a change. But, but the chaplaincy, uh, the ministry was so fulfilling and so, um, uh, the difficulties of it were, were countered with the camaraderie, the fellowship, the joy. Um, uh, that we had with other Christian couples and, and other chaplains and their families. And so it was wonderful and it, and it uh, really did become a call. And as Jim said, the, the spouses, I, it was rare to ever see a chaplain's wife that was not doing everything that they could to be a part of the ministry. So many people have asked me in my journey, well, what about your children? The difficulties for your children? And one of the things that I share when I am um, asked that question is a story that happened right before Jim deployed. We knew he was going to be gone for 15 months and it was going to be difficult, long and difficult to go through that. And so we had a friend to call the house one afternoon about a week before Jim left to see how we were doing. And he asked me, he said, what are you most concerned about? And I said, Bruce, honestly, it's our son, David. I know how to minister to my daughter. 
I can take her to the mall, give her a good foot rub. You know, I, I got, I've got my girl, but I don't know how to reach out in ways that'll be meaningful to my son. You know, a mom can only shoot so many baskets before it becomes counterproductive for the little guy. You know, he's 11 at the time. And so he, he encouraged me not to stand in the way of something that God had clearly ordained for my son's life. And he said, you get off the playing field. You're trying to protect David from something that God has ordained in his life. Move to the sideline, Terry, and pray for David and for his relationship with Christ, that it will grow and develop and mature as time goes on and as David goes through this experience. And so I sit here today telling you that that same young man is, as we speak, at the chaplain's basic course <laughs> in Columbia um, and is a reserve army chaplain. And so God answered those prayers. And I so appreciated that exhortation not to try to protect my children from their creator and from a plan that he had. During times of conflict or war, interest in spiritual things always spikes. And I once had a group of uh, four female soldiers that came to me and asked me to teach them about the Bible. Two of the four had never held a Bible in their hands. We talked about the book itself, the Old Testament, the New Testament, and I would get questions like, well, if you have a new one, why do you keep the old one? You know, and uh, why do people take Bibles into church if they already have them in the pews? And so the, the, the field has always been greatly ripe unto harvest, and the laborers are few. We need good chaplains and families to reach out to these soldiers and their families and to minister to them to teach them the tenets of, first of all, the love of Jesus Christ and what a joy it has been for us to follow that with tenets of the Reformed faith. If you feel interested or pulled or called towards this ministry, do not be afraid. If God has called you, He will see you through. He will give you the strength that you need you will not be content if you're not walking in His will.